The principal adaptive challenge faced by desert plants is, of course, scarcity of water. Green plants have responded to this challenge in various ways, some of them simple and others complex. These adaptations fall into several categories. These are reductions in leaf temperature, which can come about in several ways, limiting transpiration by reducing the number and placement of stomata, succulents, and decoupling carbon fixation from evaporation. Here, we'll consider the first three. We'll save carbon fixation for another video. Leaves evaporate water through transpiration. In turn, evaporation from the leaf is strongly driven by leaf temperature. This is because the water vapor pressure of the liquid water inside the leaf rises with leaf temperature. At higher temperatures, this makes for a higher partial pressure of water vapor at the evaporating surfaces of the spongy mesophyll, which increases the ultimate water vapor partial pressure gradient between leaf and atmosphere, which increases the evaporation rate from the leaf. Therefore, one simple way to minimize evaporation from the leaf will be to keep leaf temperature as cool as possible. The leaf's temperature is the outcome of an energy budget at the leaf surface that balances heat gain against heat loss. This is a complicated issue, and you can see more details of this in this video. For our purposes, one way to keep leaf temperatures cool in a hot sunny environment is to sprout numerous small leaves rather than a few large ones. You can see this in the tiny leaves of most desert plants, such as this acacia. Another way to cool the leaf is to generate turbulent wind flow around the leaf surface. This will increase heat loss from the leaf by facilitating heat loss through the leaf's surface boundary layer. This could, theoretically, also increase water vapor loss, but because the limiting resistance for water vapor diffusion is the stomata, or its pits, increasing turbulence will have little effect on evaporation from the leaf. For a brush up on this, Look again at the video on stomatal resistance to water vapor loss. Many of the odd shapes of desert plants, such as deep fluting or the presence of thorns, are common ways that desert plants enhance turbulent cooling of leaves in hot and sunny conditions. You can see more about that in this video. Desert plants can also arrange their leaves so that some proportion of them are shaded at any time of the day by other leaves. This is a common strategy followed by aloes, which arrange their leaves in circular arrays that maximize this kind of self-shading. Arranging the stomata so they only open on the shady parts of the leaves is another strategy. The leaves of many desert-adapted plants only have stomata on their lower surfaces. The sun shining on a leaf will typically warm the leaf's upper surface more than the shaded surface. If stomata are only on the leaf's shaded surface, evaporation will take place only through the leaf's cooler surface. This will keep water loss rates low. Succulents, the storing of water in fleshy leaves, is another common strategy of desert plants. This is most common in environments where rainfalls might be sparse but are predictable, such as the winter rainfall regimes common in Mediterranean climates, like the succulent Karoo of South Africa. Succulence is usually accompanied by a particular type of root structure. Specifically, roots of succulent plants spread laterally and are located superficially below the soil surface. This enables the plant to capture sparse rainfall over a wide surface area so that it can be transported through the roots and stored in the leaves. This often goes along with other means of reducing evaporation, such as the fluting or self-shading already described. Deep tap roots are also often used by desert plants, such as mesquite or shepherd's tree. This only works where water availability is reliable, even if the source might be deep. As such, tap roots are not really an adaptation to desert conditions, since this is what plants in more music environments do.